In this video, I want to talk about the 2D random walk, and I want to discuss the self-avoiding walk, the non-reversing walk, and the fully random walk. So I'm going to start by going through the code that was provided to you by Dr. Astagiri. So I've initialized this. We're going to use one particle, or one walker, and that walker is going to take 10 steps. And I want to explain what's happening in this code. If you notice, I've enabled debug mode. So I've placed a breakpoint here at line 27. And so whenever I run the code, it'll stop at that line. And I can execute these statements. So what this is doing is it's initializing the position of the first walker, which I only have one walker in this case. So that walker is going to start at the origin, and you'll notice that I have that plotted here on the graph to the left. So what we do first is we define the neighbors of this particle. So you'll notice that all of these neighbors are one unit length away. So now what we do is we try to find which neighbors we are allowed to move to. Well, in the first case, all are available to us. So you'll notice that where we have a 4 by 2 matrix here, what this set diff function does is it checks to see whether the neighbors matrix, whether any of the elements of this neighbors matrix is found in the trajectory matrix. So what we're doing is we're comparing row by row to see if neighbors corresponds with any values in the trajectory matrix. And what this is saying is the trajectory matrix is telling us where we've been. So right now we've only been at the origin, and since none of the neighbors are at the origin, we'll find that we have four surviving neighbors. So what happens here is we find that all four of these neighbors are suitable, and then we calculate the size of that matrix we're only worried about the number of rows because that tells us how many of these neighbors have survived. And then if m is non-zero, then we execute these statements. And so I'll execute those and continue to the next step. So now our new trajectory or our new position is now negative 1, 0. And we again, we find the neighbors. And those neighbors are the following. And what you'll notice now is that the trajectory matrix has 0, 0 corresponding with the origin. And the neighbors matrix has 0, 0 corresponding to the origin. So now the surviving members, or the surviving neighbors, will not include that origin position. So you'll notice that the surviving neighbors are now only three instead of four. So now we only have three choices for which we can make. And you'll see that that happens here. We make a random choice from one to three. And then we choose one of the neighbors that has survived and we pick it at random, as happened here, and then we extract all columns from the row 2 of surviving neighbors. So row 2, all columns of the surviving neighbors matrix will be negative 1, negative 1, so that'll be our new position, as you see here. And then we'll place that in the trajectory matrix and continue on to the next point. So now our trajectory we started at the origin, we went to negative 1, 0, then we went to negative 1, negative 1. So now, again, we find our neighbors, we find the surviving neighbors which if you look here for the self-avoiding walk, we have 
three surviving neighbors. We cannot go back because we've already been there. So and we will equal three. And now we do the same thing as before, and we'll get our new trajectory. So now we're at negative two, negative one. Let me plot that real quick. And again, we're only going to have, or we will have, three surviving neighbors. And we'll continue. And again, our new trajectory is at negative 2, 0. So let me plot that. So here now I can illustrate the difference between the self-avoiding walk, the non-reversing walk, and the fully random walk. So for the fully random walk, if I'm at this position, I can go back here, I can go down here, I can go there, or I can go there. For the non-reversing walk, I'm only not allowed to go back to where I just was, but for the self-avoiding walk, I can't go back to where I just was, and I can't go back to where I've been before. So now I only have two choices that I can make, and you'll notice that m equals 2 in this case. So what you'll find eventually if you take enough steps is that for the self-avoiding walk, you can get your walker trapped. And so after enough steps, the walker may find that he is in the middle of places where he's already been, and so he cannot take a step. But for the case of the non-reversing walk, you can always choose one of the three directions, only avoiding where you've just been. But for the fully random case, you only have to take a step without regard for where you've been at any time throughout the evolution of the system. So again, to discuss the functions that we're using in this example, in set diff, you'll notice that the neighbors and the trajectory, whenever they correspond, so if you look at a particular row of the neighbors matrix, anywhere that it corresponds with the trajectory matrix, which is telling you where we've been, we will exclude those neighbors which overlap with the trajectory matrix. So for the self-avoiding random walk, we may produce a 2 by 2, a 3 by 2, maybe even a 1 by 2, or even 0, where we cannot make a move. So then we're just concerned with the size function now. And so size is just going to return to us the size of the matrix. So we need to index a row, and that's m here, and a column n.